So on this slide we talk about exact sequence of sheaves. So this exact sequence is just the, like exact sequences in algebra where the kernel is equal to the image. So if you have seen uh, algebraic topology, so this is common in uh, cohomology. So what I'm writing are sheaves. Yeah. So we are just indexing the sheaves by certain numbers. And so you have sheaf called fi minus one, sheaf fi, sheaf fi plus one. Or you could have just written as sheaves f g h. Yeah, the index is uh, not important. So that is just a naming. So f i f i plus one. This is just naming of the sheaves. And we have these maps phi i minus one and phi i. So this above sequence of sheaves is exact. Yeah. So the above sequence of sheaves is exact if kernel of phi i is equal to image of phi i minus 1. So just like any exact sequence. Yeah, so any exact sequence of rings, modules, groups. So you can have that for sheaves also. So if you have a small sequence like this, 0 to f to g, so this sequence is exact if and only if the map phi from sheaf f to sheaf g is injective. So you have f to g to 0. This sequence is exact. Again we have a map phi from sheaf f to sheaf g. This sequence is exact if and only if phi is surjective. So we have already defined injective sheaves and surjective sheaves and we know that the notion of injectivity is subtle although you define maps as phi, phi u from f u to g u the notion is subtle. So first notice that this map phi from f to g is injective if and only if the normal morphism of sheaves the way you think of them from f u to g u this is so this map phi u which takes abelian group f u to abelian group g u is injective yeah notice that this is not how we define injectivity we define injectivity in terms of another sheaf called kernel of phi u and which is a sub sheaf of f this is not true for surjective maps yeah so notice that surjectivity we defined as co kernel of phi of u as zero yeah so we had defined injectivity and surjectivity in terms of sheaves so now we uh, define another important concept of a quotient sheaf. So take f prime as a sub sheaf of f. So f prime is a sub sheaf of f, and uh, basically quotient sheaf is to every set u of say topological space x on which we are defining these sheaves. So for every set u, you define this quotient map. Yeah, so f of u over f prime of u. Yeah. So in particular, notice that. So if you localize this uh, group f u modulo f prime u, this is equal to this map, stock over stock, yeah, f of p over f prime of p. Yeah, so this you can prove easily because when you say that you are going to take 
a direct limit around a point P you will always talk about a small neighborhood V and uh, by definition you have to take V to F of V over F prime of V yeah and if V is small enough then stock is always equal to say stock FP is always equal to F of V where V is some small neighborhood around P yeah so it just follows from the definition of stock and choose small neighborhood of V now consider a map alpha from F prime to F now image of alpha is a subsheaf of F yeah so this is important also co-kernel of alpha is a subsheaf of F and kernel of alpha is a subsheaf of F prime and you also notice the following you take image of alpha as a sheaf you take direct limit around point P or you take uh, map alpha p from f prime p to f of p these two are equal now we will state another result which we have uh, proven before yeah so notice that we had the following map f to g is an iso if and only if the map between stocks is an iso yeah so this will imply the following result so this and the previous result of image of alpha p equals to image of alpha then take direct limit around p equals to image of alpha p so the above result and the previous quotient sheaf definition along with the image of alpha result so this is exact if and only if you are exact on the so exact means image of alpha is equal to image of uh, image of alpha is equal to kernel of beta so this is exact if and only if the following sequence sequence is also exact yeah so fp to gp to hp is exact yeah, so again we will use the image at the kernel maps and take direct limit around point p Yeah, for kernel it fall the kernel the direct limit will follow from the above result which I have said recall and the result for image will follow from image uh, the result in the quotient sheaf. So now we come to a very important notion of direct and inverse image sheaf. So say there is a map F between two topological spaces X and Y. Yeah, so the, this map is a continuous map. Yeah, so we have a map F between two topological spaces X and Y. F is continuous. So we are given a sheaf F on X. Yeah, and we want to define a sheaf on Y. So given a sheaf on F means say open set U of x is given you assign f of u as abelian groups on it and uh, now you want to transfer this to space y we want to define a sheaf on space y and we will call this sheaf as f star of f so basically we we want f star f of v where v is some open set of y so we want to be able to define a sheaf on set y so let us draw some diagrams first you have space x you have space y and you have a map f between the two spaces now you fix a open set v of y and we want to define a sheaf on this set y so you could fix any arbitrary set y so this v you find the inverse image of this yeah so this v is coming from this set in x f inverse of v yeah but this f inverse of v is a set on is a set contained within x so you can define a sheaf on it yeah so f star f of v so this is what we want to define this is equal to 
since we already know a sheaf on x, we just define it as f of f of f inverse of v. So basically sheaf means you have to assign a abelian group to every open set of y and that we have been able to do so by using a continuous map. That is pretty much it. So you are given a sheaf on x. Now you can define any sheaf or topological space y if you have a continuous map because then you can go back using this continuous map and be able to define the sheaf on that space y. So now we talk about inverse image sheaf. So we want to go in the other direction. We are given a sheaf g on topological space y. So that is uh, for a set v which is an open set of y we, are, we can assign some abelian group g of v. So we first need to define this inverse image sheaf. We write it as like this f inverse g of u where u is an open set of x. So g is defined on sets of y. We want to define g on sets of x. So again we will first draw the diagram. Yeah, We have the space x. and we have a space y we have a map f from space x to space y and in the opposite direction we have the map f inverse so notice that this set u in x So this set u in x will get mapped to say some set f of u in y and we can define sheaf g on this set yeah, because f of u is contained in y and we already can define abelian groups on small open sets of space y. So this f of u is contained within some bigger set v of space y. So v is open set of y and v contains f of u. So the inverse image sheaf would be f inverse of g of u. So you could have well defined it should be something re related to g of v yeah, which contains f of u. So you contain direct limit v contains f of u and we have g of v. So basically we are taking direct limit of all the sets which contain f of u. So this could be a pre-sheaf and therefore you sheafify it. So it could be a pre-sheaf and you sheafify it.